Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a new episode of Life from Karbala with me, your host Ahmed Ali. Before we begin, before we begin the episode, I would like to send my sincerest condolences to Imam Sahib al Asr wa Zaman. May Allah hasten his reappearance for entering the month of Muharram, the month of sadness, the month of sorrow, the month where the, the holy household of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, suffered and faced the hardest times ever known in history. The month where the month of giving, the month of sacrifice, the month of dedication, the month where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed his blessings upon the land of Karbala and upon the Zuwar, the pilgrims of Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him. In this series of episodes, we will insha'Allah shed light upon the rituals of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, also and their significance. However, before we commence further into the episode, let us welcome my very good brother and a very good friend of mine, Sheikh Muntad al Haddad. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Na. How are you? Alhamdulillah, how are you? I would like to send my condolences to you and the Ahlul Bayt for entering such a sad month, the month of Muharram. I mean, as, as we mentioned, and as Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, have mentioned, the month of Muharram is, is different from the other months. Ashar al Hurm, one of the sacred months according to Ahlul Bayt and according to the ignorant time prior to Islam. I mean, when we discuss historically and according to historical researches, the pre Islamic era honored and always respected and highly respected the sacred months. Al Ashar al Hurm. That means no killing, no bloodshed, not even butchering animals. In, that, in those months and if we wanted to look at it if someone they go to the extent that if someone even commits a crime in that month they don't punish him until the following month so I mean when we read that and when we read what happened in this land especially in the area that we are sitting right now um, close to Abdul Abbas and Al Hussein I mean it's it's very sad to hear and it's unfortunate um, that what happened but can you shed some light on this fact, Inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I begin in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. All praise be to Him. And I send my peace and blessings upon Muhammad and his holy <coughs> progeny. And may the everlasting curses be upon their enemies until the day of judgment. Amin, Rabbil Alameen. And I say, al-ajr on this horrific and tragic occasion in which we commemorate the martyrdom of Abi Abdullah al Hussein salawatullahi alayhi wa rahmatullahi al fida and with him 17 from his household and his companions and his women and children it is very it is very sad because as you mentioned ahlul jahiliyyah those living at the time of ignorance or the era of ignorance used to sanctify glorify respect these four months in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention and He makes mention of the four months. He says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in Surah Al-Tawbah, verse 36, Inna iddata shuhuri inda Allah ithna ashara shahra fi kitab Allah yawma khalaqa as-samawat wal-ard minha arba'atun hurum Meaning from these four sacred months, Allah says, that the number of months according to Allah, according to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is 12 months. And amongst these 12 months, he says four are sacred. Then he says, do not commit injustice against your souls during the sacred month. Even your souls. That's how sacred these months are. The time of Jahiliyyah and after Islam. Now, what we have to discuss here is we want to take our viewers, take them back even before the period of Islam in order to bring them closer to what, to how those in the time of Jahiliyyah used to respect and honor this month. There is, there is a science in psychology. What it tells us is sometimes if you want to bring some, something or a story to the heart of the person and grab their emotions by, their, by your hands, 
bring them these stories so when they actually hear the musibah, the tragedy of Abdullah, they'll say, SubhanAllah, even those who had no religion in the pre-Islamic era used to sanctify and they would not kill their worst enemy in the month. So what happened with the family of Muhammad wasallam? How come the pure holy blood of Abi Abdullah salam was shed in this month? Now, I have for you this one example. Now before we begin, of course, as you know, and of course the viewers know, but we always have a proverb that says, ذكر فإن الذكرة تنفع رجب الحجة بالقعدة and محرم الحرام These are the four sacred months of Muharram. The story here, I, I got the story from a book called Jamharatul Amthal, volume 1, page 377. He narrates an incident that happened during the time of Jahili. There's a man by the name of Thubta ibn Arkan, or Arkan. This man had two sons, one of which was named Sa'ad and the other Sa'id. The story goes as such, these two gentlemen, Sa'ad and Sa'id, went on a journey together outside maybe in a caravan looking for uh, wealth, business one of them returned and that was who Sa'id, uh, Sa'id did not return and Sa'id returned from the trip now of course as a father you're going to be asking yeah. what happened to my son? Yeah. was my son killed? was my son lost? so right away the father's intuition tells him we have to depart right now and go look for our son so he left with a man by the name of Al-Harith Ibn Ka'ab together. And the hadith says that they left during a time, during one, during one of the sacred months. It doesn't say which month, but during one of the sacred months. It could be either Rajab, the Hajjad, the Qadr, or Muharram, or Haram. They were walking by a location when Al-Harith said to Ibn Arkan, he told him, in this precise location, I saw a young man with such and such characteristics and I killed him. Right away, Ibn Arkan sorrow befell him. He knew that the characteristics that Ibn Ka'ab gave were the characteristics of his son. The hadith says they walked away and after a little while, emotion overcame this man and he killed Al-Harith. What does it say here? It says that this action resulted in condemnation by the people. The people condemned him for killing this man. I mean, you can say maybe he killed him for revenge, he killed him. There was no religion at the time anyways. There was no Islam to be able to come and, and, and fix the life that we have. Tanlim yeah. al-Hayat. There wasn't Islam at the time. But at the same time, they consider this a blasphemous act, an act of kufr that how can you shed somebody's blood during this sacred month? What did he say? He said, the sword beat me. As in my emotion took me over and I killed him. Yeah. That is one example. There is a second example. And this example is more, it sheds light more upon uh, Ibn Abi al-Hadid al-Mu'tazili. He has a book by the name of Sharh Nahj, Sharh Nahj al balagha He says here that the Arabs, they would call the last day of Shawwal, because after Shawwal is Muharram, they would call the last day of Shawwal, Yawm al-Falta. Arabic Falta, I mean, if you look back to the Mu'ajam, unexpected slip, slip, etc. Basically, we can translate it to the unexpected day. This day beat us. We weren't paying attention to it. Why? Because as soon as the 30th of Shawwal ends and Muharram, begins those who've had somebody killed during shawwal can no longer take vengeance until muharram is done so you see even the hadith makes reference to this and he says that that is the reason why they would call the last day of shawwal yawmul falta the unexpected date because now that we've entered muharram even if my son or my daughter or my family member faced killing and i, I am right in, in, in getting back revenge against him or vengeance at the same time, they would honor this month. So now we want the viewer to pay close attention that he takes these, these words that we just narrated, he puts them in the back of his head throughout the entire month of Muharram. So every time he hears a tragedy of Abi Abdullah, of the Sabaya, of anything surrounding Muharram and surrounding 
the holy house of Muhammad وسلم, he can think back even those in the time of Jahiliyyah respected the sanctity of Muharram yet those who call themselves Muslims name Muslims they transgress the sanctity of Rasulullah by killing his children and women I want to bring him I want to bring my viewers as close as possible and I want to reach their hearts inshallah I mean, the narrations you mentioned, also Ahl Bayt, peace be upon them, have emphasized time and time regarding reviving their teachings and upholding their rituals. I mean, Ahyu Amrana, Rahamallah, Man Ahya Amrana, revive our teachings, uphold our uh, rituals. And it's very significant to, to do so. I mean, when you look at the month of Muharram, we see the streets filled of pilgrims, filled of zawar. They have yaqeen, they have certainty that with coming to the ziyarah of Imam al-Hussein, I mean, if, we, if someone was asked, why do these pilgrims come here? I mean, they're upholding the rituals, that's right, they're on, on the commands, commands yeah. of Ahlul Bayt. But they know for a fact that Imam al-Hussein, peace be upon him, sacrificed everything he has for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, and yet what did the Ummah do? Killed him. They, they not just killed him. They butchered him. Butchered him the same way they butchered goats. Worse than a goat. I mean but the topic for tonight is, is just based on rituals Inshallah. and the commands of Ahl al-Bayt. So can you share with me and the respected viewers how did Ahl al-Bayt command us to revive their teachings and uphold their rituals? Inshallah. As you said, the famous tradition of Imam Sadiq revive our commands, revive the message, revive our ideology. Al Amr, I mean, if you just translate it to English, it loses the meaning because it just says command. Yeah. Whereas the command of Ahl al Bayt is everything that revolves around them from their ikhlaq, morality, ethics, humility, mannerisms. The holy household, they even interfere with the the husband and wife they tell us how to treat your husband and how to treat your wife they tell us when to eat when to drink water brush your teeth keep hygiene and that's why everything in this majlis that we sit in today is considered part of that command amrana. what are we doing today my brother Ahmed we're reviving the message of Hussein in the holiest city on the universe, the holiest city that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ever created in his entire I mean the narrations by Ahl Bayt, peace be upon them, especially by Imam Sadiq, he says Karbala was put on earth a thousand years before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the planet. Exactly. The Rulot and Jannah, yeah. And it was taken directly from heaven. Yeah. So sorry to cut you off. No, no, it's okay. It's, it's okay. very significant it's okay. to mention that. It's okay. This hadith here, I mean, we narrated the hadith. Mm. Sometimes it's always good to narrate the hadith from the Nas in order that we can have a full understanding of this Ahyu Amrana because there is very beautiful wisdom that we can get from the Imam. So the hadith in Al Alam Majlisi and Sayyid Abdullah Shubbar in Jalal Ayun, he says, روى الحميري في قرب الإسناد في الصحيح عن الصادق. What does this mean right now? That the chain of transmission of this hadith is authenticated to the highest level of authentication, and is narrated from who? From a man, Al Fudail ibn Yassar, who was one of the close companions of the Sadiq Al Muhammad عليه الصلاة والسلام. He comes to him, a Sadiq comes to him, and he tells him, he tells him, أتجلسون He's trying to paint a picture for us. He says, Ya Fadail ibn Yasar, do you sit together with your family, with your friends, with your companions? Do you sit together in gatherings and you narrate? Do you speak about us? Do you report our narrations? Do you discuss our ahadith? Al Fadail says, Naam, ja'al tu fidak. Yes, may my soul be sacrificed for you, Ya ibn Rasulullah. This is the part. He says, Inna tilka al-majalis uhibbuha. Who's saying this? 
Imam al-Sadiq, a divine authority, a recipient of Allah's divine covenant. He says, Inna tilka al-majalis uhibbuha. These majalis, I love. These majalis, I love, Ibn Yassar. He says then, Fahyu amrana ya Fudayl. After he says, I love these majalis, he says, O oh, Fudayl, revive these teachings and these commands and instructions. Then he says, Farahamallahu man ahya amrana. This is not me or you. This is not Abdullah raising his hands and praying. This is Imam al-Sadiq, Ruhidahu al-Fida, a man who is purified through purification. He raises his hands and he says, Rahamallahu man ahya amrana. So we know that how, how beautiful these majalis are that we're sitting in right now. Then he says, Ya Fudayl man dhakarana, aw dhukirna indahu, fakharaja min aynihi mithla jinahil dhubab, ghafar allahu lahu dhunub, walaw kanat akhtharu min zubud al-bahar. He says, Ya Fudayl, he who sheds a tear, or sheds a tear by attending a majlis, a small a mosquito or a fly's wing. It's hard to measure with your fingers because it's impossible. You need a microscope to see how small that is. He says Allah will erase his sins even if they were accumulated like the soap on the, on the sea. Sometimes you see how on the seas you have a like foam. He's like, even if the whole sea was filled with sum, Allah will erase all these sins. And inshallah, in the coming nights, we'll begin speaking more detail about inshallah. what does Sha'ar sha sha Allah mean? What does Sha'ar al Hussein mean? Definitely. Crying, beating in the chest, cooking food, giving places to stay for the zawar. Everything we'll speak about it, inshallah, as much as we can. Inshallah. If Allah gives us a tawfiq, inshallah. Inshallah. I mean, regarding, as you just mentioned, um, reviving the rituals of Ahlul Bayt and upholding their rituals is one of the key points of upholding the commands of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. Uh, so, with the respected viewers, um, right now uh, you will be presented with a short report of the streets of Karbala, the kind of services with the dedicated servants of Allah, the dedicated servants of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, who are serving the zuwar of Imam Hussein, the pilgrims of Imam Hussein, who are left their homes hundreds of miles away just to visit their beloved Imam, Imam al Hussein. So please stay tuned for the report. صحت كل واحد ودينا وغرامة وانا سبط النبي As we can see here, another procession, another mokib who is trying hard to serve the servants and the zuwar of Abdullah al-Hussain, peace be upon him. As we can see here, they're providing tea and other refreshments for the pilgrims of Abdullah. Um, so, as we can see right here, I mean, two people are handing out tea Others are handing out water and they work all day, all night to serve the pilgrims, the zuwar of Aba Abdullah al Hussein, as I mentioned. So let's go and talk to the person who has worked hard to establish such a procession, such a mokib. Uh, لهذا الموكب 
للمؤسسين لهذا الموكب شلون جهودكم تقدموها للحسين علي ولزوار الحسين عليه السلام بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وال محمد بالنسبه للموكب الموكب يقدم ثلاث وجبات طعام للزوار افطار وغداء وعشاء و باقي المستلزمات انه مثلا اذا واحد تايه يدلي نعطيه عناوين يدلي هاي بعد الموجودين هنا سو so, what he just said is that this procession this موكب is initially established to serve the zawar of Ba'a Abdullah Hussein providing breakfast lunch and dinner supper and other refreshments also they if, if they see someone lost in the city of Karbala they try to direct him to the place where he to, to his destination and he says that this is basically what this mokib is I mean all of that Imam al Hassan al Askari and Imam al Hadi all of them say that whatever you can serve the Zawar of Ba Abdullah with do it because the reward in the day of judgment is great if you spend a penny and if you spend so a small portion of your of your money for the sake of Ba Abdullah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply that by a thousand انتوا هنا تقدمون الشاي والاشياء الثانيه للزائرين فكم مره باليوم واي وقت تقدمون الخدمات للزائرين؟ نقدم خدمات للزائرين الصبح الساعه 6 6 ونص نقدم وجبه افطار لحد الساعه 8 افطار وشاي يصير وقت استراحه تقريبا نذهب للمطبخ نشوف شنو اكو وجبه غدا نوزعها مالت للزوار مالت وياها شاي و... وما يبارد مالت نفس الشيء وجبة العشاء هم نفس الشيء ورا الاذان بساعة على ما يصلون العالم وصل حركة بالشارع نوزع العشاء للزوار احسنتم so what he's saying is that basically they serve the servants and they serve the pilgrims of Ba'd al-Hussein 6.30 a.m. in the morning so they have to wake up around 4 o'clock just to prepare the foods and they serve it to the pilgrims of Ba'd Abdullah around 6, 6.30 up to 9, 9.30 and with tea and a, a variety of foods as breakfast. Then at, uh, an hour after uh, noon prayer, they serve lunch. And an hour after uh, the prayer of Maghrib and Isha, they serve supper. And basically you can see at night right now, you can see that the dedication of the servants of Allah, the servants of Allah Hussein in this mokib, in this procession, how hard they are working just to satisfy the pilgrims of Abdullah. Respected viewers, hope you enjoyed uh, the report. Welcome back to, to the duration of the episode. Um, so, inshallah, we'll continue our discussion with Sheikh Muntadar al-Karbala'i. So, Sheikh, we left off at the rituals of Imam Hussein and the respected viewers saw how the dedicated servants of Allah and dedicated servants of Imam Hussein, how they served the Zawar of Imam Hussein, the pilgrims. So moving on to the actual month of Muharram, we see, and as the respected viewers know, that the month of Muharram is the month of sadness, the month of sorrow for Ahl Bayt. When the month enters, we see Ahl Bayt, their faces change, their emotions change. I mean, they say for this reason, I mean, we see Ahl al-Bayt, the Imams, you know, as I mentioned, their emotions change because they know that their grandfather, that his son, as Imam Ali, the, their fathers were martyred and were slaughtered in the land of Karbala. So why is that? I mean, even, even as Shia, we tend to change all of a sudden. Our emotions, our moods change to sadness, to feeling sorry for what happened in Karbala feeling that we should actually be with Imam Hussain, peace be upon him and you know defending the rituals and defending the teachings that Imam Hussain died for so why is that Shaykh? I mean can you shed light upon that share with the respected viewers some narrations regarding how Ahlul Bayt emphasized on not laughing in this month overlooking you know happiness not being happy you know, taking life at, with, with sadness to, to always remember Imam Hussein, peace be upon him in this month. The best way to introduce 
the month of Muharram in general is from the tongue of the Imam. We have nobody in this world but them. Every time we need help, we request them, we invoke them. Because they're Allah's most favorite creation. They're the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enjoys hearing us recite their names when invoking them. This report, this hadith that I have here prepared for the viewers is a very famous and well-known hadith. And honestly, it's a very heartbreaking hadith because it paints us a picture of how the holy household, the progeny of Muhammad وسلم, used to greet the month of Muharram. Do they greet it with laughter or they greet it with sadness? It's important that this hadith be repeated year after year, day after day, in order that the Shi'i individual, when he comes to these hadith, he begins to take from them examples and extract from them. How should I, as a Muslim, not even as a Shi'i, as a Muslim, Shi'i, non-Shi'i, you can be anything you, know, you want. How do I greet this month? Do I greet it by saying yani, happy, happy new month? Do I greet it by bringing presents? No, I greet it the same way that Imam al-Rada explains in this hadith. This hadith, it's narrated by Shaykh al-Saduq in his Amali. And it's also found in various other books that Shaykh al-Saduq has written such as Ayun Akhbar al-Rida and the Qabad al-A'mal of Shaykh of Sayyid ibn Tawus and other narrations in terms of its chain of authentication of its chain of its isnad chain of sorry of transmission mm-hmm. Sayyid ibn Tawus in his Iqbal when he narrates it he says it is one of the reasonable narrations that has been narrated by the Imma alayhum salam it is from what we have narrated through several chains from Abu Ja'far Muhammad ibn Baba Wai al-Qummi al-Saduq so he confirms that its chain is reliable. And if you want to look at the chain as well, it's narrated from trustworthy companions and trustworthy traditionists of hadith. And honestly, this hadith, every time I read it, I feel my skin, I feel goosebumps. I feel chill down my spine. The Imam really puts the entire or not even the entire, because I can't say the entire, but he puts a very small picture he paints for us about Karbala. What happened on Karbala? He says, Qala al-Rida alayhi salam. First, the Imam, what does he do? He does what we did. Of course, what we did is we took it from the Imam himself. I took my, my topic of discussion, extracted from his hadith. The Imam begins by informing his companion about the sanctity of Muharram. He says, إِنَّ لِمُحَرَّمْ شَهْرٌ كَانَ أَهْلُ الْجَاهِلِيَّ يُحَرِّمُونَ فِيهِ الْقِتَالِ The month of Muharram was a month that even those at the time of ignorance used to sanctify and do what? They would forbid fighting in this month. Then he says, فَاسْتَحَلَّتْ فِيهِ دِمَاؤُنَا وَهُتَكَتْ فِيهِ حُرْمَتِنَا وَسُبِيَ فِيهِ ذَرَارِينَا وَنِسَاؤُنَا He says, our blood was made lawful, our sanctity transgressed, our descendants and women were taken captive, our tents were burnt and all that was in our tents was stolen. Then he says, وَلَمْ تَرَعْ لِرَسُولِ اللَّهِ حُرْمَةٌ فِي أَمْرِنَا The sanctity of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam was not revered, reverenced during this month. It was not taken, was not respected. The sanctity of Rasulullah was not respected in this month. In fact, it was transgressed. The sons of Rasulullah were humiliated in this month. Then he says, "Inna yawm al Hussein akrah jufunana, wa asbala dumuana wa adal azizina bi ardi karbin wa bala 
وَأَوْرَثْنَا الْكَرْبَ وَالْبَلَاءِ He says the day of Hussein has wounded our eyelids. Wounded. It means our eyes have become, began to bleed from the increased tears. Then he says, وَأَسْبَلَ دُمُوعَنَا He says, أَقْرَحَ جُفُونَنَا Wounded our eyelids. Then made our tears flow. أَسْبَلَ دُمُوعَنَا Flow like a waterfall, our tears. وَأَذَلَّ عَزِيزَنَا This month humiliated our, our loved ones. And where? In the land of Karb wa the land of adversity and affliction. And we inherited adversity and affliction until the day of judgment. Till the final day of judgment. Then, فَعَلَى مِثْلِ الْحُسَيْنِ فَلْيَبْكِ الْبَاكُونَ And like upon Hussein, those who weep should weep. Upon Hussein, those should weep. Then he says, فَإِنَّ الْبُكَاءِ يُحُطَ الذُّنُوبَ الْعِظَامِ The greatest of sins. These tears, these tears, that this one tear that falls in, in, in hellfire will turn off the fires of hell. The same tear that you weep on Abi Abdullah al-Hussein, and I'm not saying this, Imam Rada is saying this, Gharib al Ghuraba, Ali ibn Musa al-Rada, Salamullah alayhi Yuhutta al-Dhanub al-Idham means it destroys, it eradicates the greatest of sins. And then here is Mahal al-Shahid, Kana Abi Musa al-Kadhim, Bab al-Hawaij, Kana Abi, it dakhala shahru al-Muharram, la yara dhahikan. When my father, upon entering the month of Muharram, would not be seen smiling. Then he says, وَكَانَتُ الْكَآبَ تَغْلِبُ عَلَيْهِ حَتَّى يَمْضِ مِنْهُ عَشْرَةَ أَيَّامِ Depression used to befall my father ten days straight. My father would be in a state of lamentation and grief and depression. And when they, then he says, وَإِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ الْعَاشِرِ مِنَ الْمُحَرَّمِ كَانَ ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمُ يَوْمُ مُصِيبَةِ وَحُزْءُ وَبُكَاءِ And when the tenth day of Muharram, my father would inform us that today is a day of calamity, a day of grief and lamentation. وَيَقُولُ Al-Kadhim used to say to his family, هُوَ الْيَوْمُ الَّذِي قُتَلَ فِيهِ جَدِّ الْحُسَيْنَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ what lessons? Imam al kadhim used to greet this month with no smiles. He used to greet this month with grief and lamentation. And he would be depressed. Kaaba would overcome him, befall him for 10 days straight. And then he would say, This is what I get from the Ahlul Bayt. This is how I introduce the month of Muharram. And that nobody come and tell me, this hadith is weak, this hadith is kada. No, so much of our scholars narrated this hadith and so much of our scholars wrote books on this hadith by itself. If you, can, if you sit on this hadith and you discuss, and when Sadiq says, hadithun wahid ma'ad diraya afdalu min alfi hadith. One hadith that you read and you ponder upon it, you comprehend it, you understand it, is better than 1,000 hadith that you read without comprehension and pondering. From this hadith, and inshallah in the, in the nights, we will go back to this hadith. That's why I mentioned this hadith. This hadith, and the next hadith we will narrate, will be hadith we'll be go, we, we will go back to night after night because it contains so much lessons that we will take the mahal, the expert that we need, the section that we need, for a specific topic. Because in this hadith, the Imam tells us that the day of Hussein wounded our eyelids. When it comes to Sha'iratul Idma al Muqaddas, we'll bring this hadith and we'll tell them, look at the Imam, he's saying that this day has wounded our eyelids. And I tell you, what does a wound weed? A qurah, what is a qurah? It's inside. Inside, meaning from the inside, 
a wound has happened and this wound is causing my eye to bleed. أَقْرَحَ جُفُونَنَا وَأَسْبَلَ دُمُوعَنَا بِأَرْضِ كَرْبٍ وَبَلَا Now I tell my believers, brothers and sisters, Shi'i or non-Shi'i, this is the son of Rasulullah. We have our differences when it comes to who is the Imam. At least there is no difference in opinion that these are the sons of Rasulullah, that these are purified through purification. Meaning, let us set aside these differences. At least the Imam here is telling you, do not spend Muharram in happiness. Then you come and you fabricate a hadith found in Bukhari and Muslim and other books of hadith saying that Rasulullah says, لا تحزن في محرم بل هو يوم فرح وسرور في عاشورة they have this hadith and they say fast because Banu Umayyah fabricated a lot of hadith to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that was their aim I mean them fighting the Imam their motive and the aim of killing the Imam was to stop the lineage of Prophet Muhammad stop the religion of Islam so they can continue it in their lineage and take Islam over and inherit it. It's like someone it's like something that's been inherited for years. It's protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Hafidun. We have revealed and descended the religion, the Quran, everything, Islam, and we are the ones to protect it. I mean Muhammad Sajjad alayhi salam every time he would sit and look at water, Muharram or not Muharram. Look at water, they narrate that his eyes become to shed blood and blood would fall in that glass of water so he wouldn't drink. And he says to his companions, what you have been told about Ashura is nothing compared to what we have seen. If, you, if we mentioned what happened in the, on the day of Ashura to our Shia, they would have died as, as a result of sorrow and sadness. What did Imam Sajjad see on Ashura? What did Ahlul Bayt witness? What did they go through? I mean, we take life so easy and we think it's difficult. We see Ahlul Bayt weeping. Imam Al Mahdi, may Allah hasten his reappearance, he says, I will cry over you day and night. I will mourn over you day and night and I will shed blood instead of tears. I mean, when we hear this narration, another narration um, that I read, uh, a man was asking Imam Sadiq, peace be upon him. He says, O Master, when someone loses their loved ones, they sit by their deceased and grief a short period of time, yet I see you and your Shia increase the lamentation and sadness upon the incident and upon entering the month of Muharram. So why is that Ibn Rasulullah? I mean, we mentioned, you mentioned the narration by Imam Al-Rudha, by Imam Musa al kazim peace be upon them, and the narration by Imam Al-Mahdi, may Allah his name reappearance. I mean, what is the significance behind mourning and lamenting over Imam Hussein and over the month of Muharram? that you mentioned is a hadith that is found in a book the book the exact title of this book is called Thamarat ul awad volume 1 page 37 as sayyid Ali ibn al ibn al Hussein al Hashimi al Najafi it's a more recent book and he narrates it from other old books Honestly, this, this hadith that you mentioned, I'm glad that you mentioned it because it fits these nights. The hadith says, قيل للصادق عليه السلام سيدي جعلت فداك إن الميت يجلسون له بالنياحة بعد موته أو قتله Like you mentioned, that oh my master the deceased or the one that was killed from a family they sit by him and they mourn and lament and if they do so they do it for a short period of time and 
على الحسين عليه السلام but I see you and your household and your Shia from the beginning of the month continuously you perform ma'tam, you perform lamentation and grief and weep this is also important because this man is telling us that the Imams used to spend these nights in grief and lamentation that they used to uphold and do majalis Husayniya like we have today the Imam says فَقَالَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ يَا هَذَا إِذَا هَلَّ هِلَالُ مُحَرَّمْ نَشَرَةُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ ثَوْبَ الْحُسَيْنِ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ وَهُوَ مُخَرَّقٌ مِنْ ضَرْبُ السُّيُوفِ وَمُلَطَّخٌ بِالدِّمَاءِ فَنَرَاهُ نَحْنُ وَشِيَعَتُنَا بِالْبَصِيرَةِ لَا بِالْبَصَرِ فَتَنْفَجِرْ دُمُوعَنَا He says, when the crescent of Muharram begins to form, When the crescent of Muharram begins to form, the angels take the shirt of Abi Abdullah al Hussein and they circulate around the world with it. They hang it. And when we look at this shirt, we see the marks of the swords on the shirt and we see it covered in blood. The Imam says, us and our Shia, we see it, not with our eyes, our naked eye, but we see it through our hearts. And upon witnessing this, our hearts blow up in tears. These nights right now, the angels right now circulate Karbala. They pray for the Zawar that come. They have the shirt of Ibi Abdullah right now in the skies. And they grieve and they mourn and they lament because even the angels lament, even the jinn lament, even those creations, material and non material, lament upon Ibi Abdullah al Hussein. There is a divine secret that comes with lamentation. I mean, we could, we could say there are some of these secrets from the ahadith, but there is something. There is something that makes this old man who can barely walk, stand on his feet 24 hours a day and yell at the top of his lungs, Oh, visitors, of the father of Ali, Zawar Abu Ali, come, drink, eat, rest. What makes this man move? I mean, if you wanted to look more into the, we see that you know when we mention the Zawar and how people you know come to Karbala with such devotion with such dedication and how they serve the Zawar of Allah Hussain, peace be upon him Yawm Al-Qiyamah on a day of judgment Fatimah Al-Zahra will stand in front of humanity and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will call out who are the Shia a large crowd will stand up along with prophets then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will call out who are the Zawar of Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him? Who are the people who serve the Zawar of Hussein? A large crowd out will stand. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, You enter heaven with no judgment and with no sins, and you can intercede for a hundred people, for a hundred sinful people, even if they were in hell. SubhanAllah. But regarding the rituals and uh, the, the dedicated servants of Imam Hussain, peace be upon him, Karbala. The respected viewers um, will now go into a short break where you will see another procession, another mokib, who the members of it 
are working very hard day and night to serve the Zawar of Imam Al Hussein during these blessed days. So let's go to that report and come back to the studio. Stay tuned. As we can see right here, the smoke is providing tea for the pilgrims of Abdul Al Hussein, peace be upon him. As we talked to the establisher of the smoke as this procession, he discussed that this procession was established early in the 80s during Saddam's time. So let's go in and talk about how, talk about the different services and how the smoke of this procession is serving the Zawar of Abdul Al Hussein. So let's go in. عليهم ما حد يلوم ويعاتي عليهم ما حد يلوم ويعاتي أريد ما سمع يسمع كلام. As you can see right here, they're preparing the tea right now to serve the zawar of Abdullah Al Hussein peace be upon him. So, I mean, Mama Sadiq alayhi salam states, when a person spends a penny or something very simple in the sake of Ba Abdullah and for the sake of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply that, especially in the month of Muharram, Allah will multiply that by a thousand. So it is very significant to share, to donate, to do whatever you can so you can serve the zuwar of Ba Abdullah Hussein, peace be upon him. And as you know, the month of Muharram is the month of sacrifice, is the month of donating whatever you have to this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's talk to the servants of Allah, the servants of Ba'abd al Hussein, and what they are providing to the Zawar of Ba'abd al Hussein. Ya Allah, Assalamu Alaikum. So, here is a polite and honored servant to Ba'abd al Hussein, peace be upon him. So, I'm going to ask him a couple of questions so we can understand and know what they are providing for the Zawar. حبيبي حجينا ما هي الخدمات التي تخدمون بها زوار أبا عبد الله الحسين عليه السلام بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على محمد وآل محمد نعز سيد ومولاي صاحب العصر والزمان والسيد القائد قائد الحج الشعب المقدس السيد علي السستاني وهذا المصاب الجلل مصاب محمد وآل محمد هاي الموكب هذا الله صل على محمد وآل محمد. إيش ما يقدم على محمد وآل محمد. الله صل على محمد وآل محمد. إيش ما يقدم لو ما يعيون قليل. هذا موكب مشهود لكل مناسبات آل محمد. سواء موسى بن جعفر بالكاظم المقدسة بسامرة المقدسة وفاة الإمامين العسكريين. شارك هذا الموكب بخدمة النازحين شارك هذا الموكب بخدمة الحج الشعبي شارك هذا الموكب بخدمة الحج الشعبي So what he's saying is that this procession, this موكب has been established for a very long time We thank, as he says, we thank the armed forces, the Iraqi armed forces who are defending the country and send our condolences to Imam Sahib al-Asr wa zaman may Allah hasten his appearance for entering the month of sadness, the month of sorrow, month of Muharram al-Haram. So what he's saying is that in this mokib, in this procession, they are handing out tea, water, whatever they can for the sake of Ba'a Abdullah and for the sake of earning the greatness and blessings which are bestowed upon the land of Karbala. So as you can see here, they're handing out 
tea, water, whatever they can for the sake of Ba Abdullah. شنو هي الأشياء اللي مر بها هذا الموكب اللي صار يعني بهالعظمة أو اللي شلون تأسس هذا الموكب؟ هذا الموكب تأسس ببركة محمد وآل محمد، هذا الموكب يعني بفت شغلات اللي تشهد به كل الزوار وكل هاي الأراضي المقدسة كربلاء واللي قلت لك من سامرة والكاظمية. يعني دنقى الواقفة من حج ماجد وحج شاكر وهاي الشباب الخدمة اللي يعني ما تدري منين ما منين تلتفت يعني هسه لو تعرف هسه الشباب بدهم يبقون للصبح يشتغلون في سبيل الساير يوصل لي جاي يلقى شاي الصبح فطور يعني ماشي مالته يعني الغداء احسن تو سو وات هيز وات اي اسكت هيم از ذات هاو اند وات وير ذا سيركمستانسز ذات ذا سموكي ونت ثرو تو استابلش سچ جريتنس اند سيرفينج ذا زوار اوف عبد الله as he said and as he mentioned it's been here for more than 10 years and they've been serving the zawar of ba abdullah and he says <laughs> thanks to allah and thanks to ahlul bayt for blessing this mokib for the continuation in serving ahlul bayt and serving the zawar of ba abdullah so as you can see the people in this mokib are very dedicated and the youth don't even want to go home they sleep here eat here just and for the sake of serving the zawar of ba abdullah hussein So thank you very much. Back to the studio. Respected viewers, welcome back. Inshallah, you enjoyed the report and seen the dedicated servants of Allah, how they served the zawar of Imam Al Hussein, peace be upon him. So back to our discussion with Sheikh Muntazar Al Karbalai. Welcome back, Hayyu Sheikhna. Um, so we've been discussing the significance. Of reviving and upholding the rituals of Imam Al Hussein and teachings of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, but we've come to a point which is very significant to pause and ponder upon, and also discuss what that point is. I mean, a short story. It's a very long story, but making it short is that uh, on a day of judgment. One of the imams, I can't remember which imam, but one of the imams narrates that on a day of judgment, a gem will appear, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will ask all the prophets to think how much this gem is worth. So it goes around twenty, one hundred and twenty thousand, one hundred twenty-four thousand prophets. It goes to Prophet Muhammad. He says. Oh Allah, I'm not the one responsible to talk about this gem. He goes, then Prophet Muhammad asks, "Who is Ya Allah?" He says, "Imam Hussein." That gem belongs to Imam Hussein. When it came to Imam Hussein, he says, "Ya Aba Abdullah, what is this gem?" The Prophet knows, but he wants us to know. He says, "What is that gem?" He says, "That's a single tear of a believer who was sitting in a gathering, and my musiba, my tragedy, was spoken in that gathering, and he and one tear came out of his eye." Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "How do you reward that person?" He says, "He enters heaven with no judgment and free of sin, and he can intercede for anyone he wants." I mean, when we hear such of such narrations. And also, when we just talk about Imam Hussein, when we say his name, when we just even remember him in, in a thought, our emotions suddenly change. The way we behave, the way we think, the way we talk, automatically changes. I mean, why is that? Even when we read the Imams, Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, he says, "I am the Prince of Tears. No believer remembers me." Except that he cries. Why is that so significant? Why is the tear for Imam Hussein so significant? As you mentioned earlier, a tear as small as a as a fly, fly's wing, is enormous to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Why is that? If you can explain that to us, please. Imam Hussein alayhi salam, the famous hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And that Imam Al Hussein's 
Imam al Hussein, his his sacrifice, everything revo that revolves Muharram, that revolves al Hussein alayhi salam and his sacrifice in in, in, in on Ashura is is a fire that burns in the believer's hearts that does not turn off. Even on the day of judgment, the hadith tell us that Sayyidah Fatima alayhi salam will perform a huge, massive gathering, a Majlis Husayni, where she tells Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I want you to judge between me and those who killed my son al Husayn. Ya Allah, I want judgment to befall my son, so that my son, so that everybody can be part of this majlis, the entire world, everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created from the beginning of time until the day of judgment. The hadith says that Fatima will let out a screeching moan, a very sad moan that every single human on that day will begin to cry and with them the angels and the jinn. This hadith, that I am the prince of tears. And then Imam al Hussein tells you that a believer, which is a true believer, once he remembers al Hussein ibn Ali, he begins to cry. This tells us that belief is a restriction that needs to be established before. The person begins to cry. So when you see somebody crying for Abu Abd al Hussein, right away we can say that this man has some belief, either a partial belief in the Imam or he's halfway there to the Imam, and so on. There's a beautiful story that Sayyid Muhammad Rada Shirazi narrates in his book, Al Sha'ar al Husayniya, or Ahya al Sha'ar al Husayniya. It's very close to the way that Imam al Hussein alayhi salam mentions that no believer remembers he except that he cries he remember this this story here affected me greatly there's a man a speaker khatib they used to live in kashan modern day iran kashan this this speaker he would rise to the pulpit and he would say six words Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah. And the entire majlis would start crying. That's it. He would not narrate the tragedy of Karbala, he would not do anything. These six words in Arabic, there are six. Which they translate to Peace be upon you, O Father of Abdullah. The majlis would can right away start crying. Now somebody came to him and says, Ya Shaykh. Or Ya Sayyiduna, different reports say Shaykh or Sayyiduna. What is the secret behind these six words? Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah. And Aba Abdullah hears me. He tells him one day, I finished a majlis and it was either the ninth or the tenth month, tenth night of Muharram al Haram. I was tired, fatigued, overwhelmed. A man came up to me and he said to me, I want you to come to my house right now to recite a majlis aza. He said, I can't, I'm tired. He says, the man insisted and insisted until I said, you know what, salamna. We're going to come to your house to recite the majlis aza. He says, I entered the majlis. I saw him, with, there was a chair, but there was nobody in the majlis. He told me, please, Shaykhuna, recite the Musaybah by Abdullah alayhi salam. He told them, there's nobody in the majlis. Who am I reciting for? This is the lesson we learned from this. Don't ever say, I have no audience. Yeah, Fatim Zahra is in, by, by the door. He told him, he told him, Ya Shaykh, recite for Fatima to Zahra. Read for Our Lady Fatima, peace be upon her. He says, I came. I sat on the majlis and I began Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah and I heard screeching, moaning, tears of women yet there was nobody in the majlis and then I continued my musibah 
I came home that same night. I saw a dream. As if somebody called out to me saying, Oh Shaykh, Lady Fatima Salamullah alayha was in that gathering. And he says that now every time I mention these six words, Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah, the believers suddenly begin to blow up in tears. This is Khidbat al Hussein alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells in the Quran that He is the one that's rich and we are the one that are poor. He, Imam al Hussein does not need us, our majalis. We need Him. We need Him to find a means to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here, in Surah Al-Fatir, verse 15, O mankind, it is you who was in need of Allah. But Allah is rich, free of all wants and need, worthy of praise. We need Allah. We need Hussein. We need Ali. We need Fatima. They do not need us. Why should we leave this dunya when our time period in this dunya is very limited? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Imran, verse 140, He says, Such days of varying fortunes. We give to men and men by turns. Allah tells you, Ya Abdi, these days we give to men and men and we take turns. Your time is limited. Right now I'm 26 years old. Say I live towards 100 years old. Meaning I've lived 25% of my life. What have I contributed? To Allah in 25% of my life, to Hussein alayhi salam in 25% of my life. What have I contributed? Right now, do I have certainty that when I meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I tell him, he tells me, what did you contribute in this dunya? Did you, did you tell people about me? Did you serve my, those that I favored upon the, the rest of the world? Did you share the oppression of God? Did you revive other commands? And then, at the end of the day, what does the, what is the, the Ab say? Surah Al-Zumar, verse 56, when it comes to a point, when the angel of death comes, are we going to tell him, Ya Malik al-Mawt, go back. Wow. Musa alayhi salam, Dawood alayhi salam, the prophets, when, the, when their time came, their time came. Then Allah says, least the soul should then say on that day, woe unto me that I neglected my duty towards Allah and I was but amongst those who lost. Min al-Khasirin. And here it says towards Allah, but serving Hussein is the same thing as serving Allah. Man arad Allah, bada'a bikum. That if you want to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you begin with Abi Abdullah al-Hussein. You begin with the Ahl al because they take us towards Allah. They are the Ark of Salvation. And the fastest Ark is the Ark of Hussein. So let us continue during these days of Muharram and mourning to serve Abi Abdullah in the best way we can and give what we can. Because as you know, every time we give Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards us in this dunya and the hereafter. We're not khasirun, just in this dunya. Sometimes people say, I spend this much money, I'm, I won't have any more money. Wallah al that one dinar is 1,000 dinar. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It will multiply. Definitely. Sorry to cut you off, Shaykhna, but we're coming to a conclusion uh, of, to, of the episode. Um, so, inshallah, we'll continue the series tomorrow, inshallah. So, stay tuned. Shaykhna, if you have anything to conclude the episode with, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept these majalis. Insha'Allah. And, and give Insha us Allah. the tawfiq and the guidance and the blessings to be able to continue Insha throughout Allah. the 10 days of Muharram and to be part of those who serve. Insha'Allah, definitely, definitely. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters, Shaykhna, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Stay tuned for the next episode. And if you, didn't, if you weren't able to check out this, uh, watch this, uh, this episode, you can check out our YouTube channel at Imam Hussein 3 TV. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykhna.